A typical Sunday morning in suburban Moscow. A makeshift ring had been set up amongst the high-rise blocks. Some sand, rope, and wooden crates so the audience has somewhere to sit down. Like every other weekend, neighbors are getting together in the parking lot to watch dozens of amateur MMA, or mixed martial arts, matches. Those fighting are allowed to punch, kick, elbow, and knee their opponents, and even hit them when they're on the ground. There's always a doctor on standby. As he waits for his turn, Andrei Malikov is warming up in a corner. An unemployed 22-year-old, he has traveled over 600 miles by carpooling from the countryside to get to the capital city. <laughs> this is the first time he'll step into the ring. He signed up when he arrived. His baptism of fire is against a 30-year-old lawyer who seems a lot fitter than him and a more seasoned street fighter. It's not long before Andre is in trouble. He takes a good few hits before his opponent tries to strangle him on the ground. But despite the odds being stacked against him, Andre makes a fairy tale comeback. It is becoming an even match. After four intense minutes, the referee finally ends the match. For Andre, a draw is as good as a victory. No medal for Andre, just a photo with two ring girls. Not the greatest reward, but the young man is ready to try again as soon as possible. He's one of the millions of Russians who share a passion for MMA. The sport has spread across the entire country with its celebrities, amateurs, dreams, and champion training centers. MMA has taken over the entire country, even in the most remote areas of Russia. Deep in the Caucasus Mountains, kids are being trained morning through night to become future champions. <laughs> For a lot of families, having a successful fighting career is the only opportunity to escape poverty. These young boys and girls dream of becoming fighting stars and living the glamorous lifestyle. However, MMA has become a political weapon in the country. In Chechnya, it's used as a platform for a dictator. 
вся идея по развитию ММА, по развитию всех видов спорта, несомненно, она принадлежит Рамзану Ахматовичу. In Moscow, MMA can lead even to political power. MMA has given and taken a lot from me. Now it's time for me to give back, um, and I, I love this. I really love this country. Some even become fight organizers. With tens of millions of fans across the country, businessmen are cashing in on this opportunity. My small collection. This is gifts from YouTube. Street Fight Shelter for basing one million subscribers. This is our investigation into MMA in Russia. Mixed martial arts. A lot more than just a sport. It's a phenomenon. Dagestan is a republic independent from the Russian Federation, situated in the heart of the Caucasus Mountains, a poor and rural region where one of the only ways out is to become an MMA champion. We travel to the small village of Imushi, about 5,000 feet above sea level. It has just 200 inhabitants, including Abu Leyev's family. <laughs> It's 7 a.m., the start of the day, and for 14-year-old Haji Murat, the start of his training. He's on school holidays, but there's no time for relaxation. Without a scrap of food in his belly, he's watched closely by his mother as he works out. He alternates between abdominal exercises and pull-ups. The fate of his entire family rests in his hands. Wrapped up to fight the cold, he heads off for a five-mile run in the mountain. His father watches him like a hawk. Перед собой надо такой цель поставить вот это каждый день, каждый день таким трудом это все дается. Ну это все таки нельзя. Что хочешь, как хочешь. Чтобы добиться своего, надо много что. Учусь что-то, чтобы что-то добиться в этой жизни, надо чего-то лишить. Например, детство, игры всякие, вот это. Это все надо забыть. His father is his first coach. Я прихожу сюда, слежу, где, чтобы он не остановился нигде, чтобы было честно. Вот когда пробежит он без единой остановки до дома, вот тогда уже нормально. У него есть выносливость, все-таки молодец. Давай до поворота туда. Пошли, молодец. No time to rest for Haji Murat, however, who then gets his gloves for another half hour of training. This intense rhythm has allowed him to become Dagestan's number one under 14s foot fist boxing champion. We can see him here in the cage wearing the red helmet. He hasn't lost a match yet. Haji Murat is the youngest member of the family and shares his room with his big brother. Both boys take part in fighting sports, but it's little Haji Murat who has impressed his parents the most. Четырехкратный он призер Дагестана. Первые места это все за Дагестан. Вот первенство республики по ушу санда. Я в расстройстве. Оказывается, второе место здесь в Дагестане. Это значит проиграл. Все абсолютно у Хаджи Мурата, они все первые. For now, Haji Murat's talent isn't bringing any money to the family, and they still need to eat. His parents bake bread in their garage to sell it to their neighbors in the village. Ну, 
характер воспитывает. В селе тем более работы нет. Пройдет, он пройдет, он такой. Я очень надеюсь. Hachi Murat helps as much as he can. After his training, he delivers the bread. But he has bigger dreams to become the family's breadwinner. The holidays are almost over, and Haji Murat is preparing to go back to school. To give himself the best chance, he attends a champion training center, which should make him Dagestan's newest star. Haji Murat dreams of walking in the footsteps of the region's biggest idol, Khabib Nurmagomedov. MMA's global superstar, who comes from a small village just a few miles away from here. Nicknamed the Eagle, he became world champion in the sport. He earns millions of dollars and is constantly on TV and billboards. He became legendary after fighting a bear at only eight years old, encouraged by his father, most likely to toughen him up. After gaining the title, he was welcomed in person by Vladimir Putin. He was equally welcomed like a king by Ramzan Kadyrov, president of neighboring Chechnya. Posing with a star like Khabib is good publicity. It even earns him a Mercedes as a parting gift. Khabib has become the most famous man from Dagestan. One man who makes the most of his fame is his father. He was the one who pushed his son into the arms of a bear when he was young. He manages a training center in Makakala, the capital of Dagestan. <laughs> Thanks to his son, Abdul Manap has also become something of a celebrity. His training center has become hugely successful. Everyone wants to sign up to the Champions Club, where it all started for Khabib. Khabib's father's philosophy is that both discipline and payment are no laughing matter. The only break they get is to pray, which is included in the program. Dagestan has a very strict Muslim community. The business brings in a lot of money. The training center's reputation has spread past the country's borders. Khabib's father receives requests from all over the world. Candidates are ready for anything, either for themselves or for their children. <laughs>
Пожалуйста. Я хочу быть похожим на Хабиба, говорит, и начал ездить туда, это где медведь. MMA can lead to many opportunities in Dagestan. It's a good investment for the parents. We are back with young Haji Murat at home. He is headed back to his boarding school, a champion martial arts training center. His father is driving him. He's made many sacrifices for his son. У нас самое главное сейчас перед женой, чтобы они закончили эту школу, а нам что? Нам уже больше, нам уже не надо ничего. On the way, Haji Murat and his dad stopped to visit the richest man in the region a descendant of the Tsars. He acts as the teenager's protector. Ketmas Avaskia is 62 years old, with two wives and seven children. <laughs> he has decided to sponsor the teenager. His parents don't earn enough to pay for his school. It's up to the young man to remember him later on, if he succeeds. His mentor insisted on maintaining patriotic values. Поэтому вот эти вот бойцовские навыки они имеют столетние традиции и на сегодняшний день эти традиции вы знаете продолжаются очень успешно. Спорт, единоборство, бойцовские виды спорта это наши единственное оружие на сегодняшний день и они пользуются тем, чтобы овладеть этими навыками. A short folk song is then sung to give him strength. Hachi Murat heads off in a minibus the next morning. He is heading to the five directions of the world school, hidden deep in Dagestan's mountains. A completely unique institution where the best fighters in the region are trained. 250 students aged between 10 and 18 years old. It's a fast-paced school. On top of school, there is four hours of fighting, six days a week. After the school salute, the first training session starts before breakfast. Running, push-ups, sit-ups. Hachi Murat may be the smallest, but he's the most promising. He is always the example used to demonstrate moves for the other students. Haji Murad is also one of the most motivated. It's already a sure thing that he'll become a professional fighter. <laughs> 
after an intense session, the students are finally allowed a protein-packed breakfast, followed by three hours of class, history, math, and Russian. It's difficult for students to keep up, what with the lack of sleep and sheer amount of sport. Haji Murad is having trouble paying attention. Then it's straight back to fighting. Everyone has their own specialty. Here, Taekwondo lessons. Haji Murad is working on his second daily training session. On today's program, stretching. The children need to be as flexible as dancers. They should also be prepared to take punches. The session ends with a one-to-one -one with a helmet for protection. Towards the end of the school day, a man interrupts their class. He is immediately surrounded by kids. It's Hussein Magomedov, the school's founder. The school has impressive alumni, a tiny school in a tiny region which has churned out many world champions. But a dark cloud hangs above the students, jihadism. A lot of young people in the region have joined ISIS recruited by extremists hidden in the mountains. It's the principal's biggest problem. This position has cost the school dearly. The school has been victim to four arson attacks over the past few years. Ну и вот решили, что не судить надо людей этих, а самим воспитывать с детства молодых ребят. Вот и все. И на это надо отдать всю жизнь. In the evenings, Haji Murad and the other kids watch and admire the former students, now MMA stars, who come back to train and serve as an example. The school walls are plastered with their portraits. Champions rather than terrorists, MMA is used as a political weapon. Here, it is used to fight extremism. But in the neighboring regions, it's used to feed the ambitions of a dictator. We headed to Chechnya, the Russian Republic neighboring Dagestan, led with an iron fist by Ramzan Kadyrov. Salam alaikum! Salam alaikum! Kadyrov has made MMA his personal platform, giving his country a glorious image, while human rights abuses are happening daily. He likes to introduce himself using music on his Instagram account. As a well-trained president who lifts weights, 
runs for hours, and even pulls trucks using only his own strength. A manly republic led by a manly president. In the capital city of Grozny, a huge arena has been built for MMA. Every weekend, fighters come from across the world for matches. We are allowed to attend one of the evenings. The room is packed, and President Kadyrov has the best seat in the house. He is the most enthusiastic in the crowd. The highlight of tonight's show is a boxing match fought by his own 13-year-old son. His opponent barely attempts to fight back. He chooses instead to just protect himself. It's best not to risk hurting Kadyrov Jr and above all, to avoid hurting the president's pride. The match was obviously fixed, but Dad is still delighted. Kadyrov is incredibly invested in combat sports, especially MMA, using them as a tool to enhance the region's image, as well as his own reputation. He has launched MMA clubs all over Chechnya. He has even developed his own professional league and built up a team of champions who fight under his colors. Chabors, which translates as half bear, half wolf, is the star of Kadyrov's team, five-time MMA world champion and 100% sponsored by the president. <laughs> Chabors's face is plastered across every street, alongside one other person, of course. Это плакат фотография с места с нашим главой республики Армения. And the president hasn't just given him cars. Kadyrov moved him into a luxury apartment in Grozny's wealthiest area. Welcome to my home. It's a gift from my brother, President of Club Ahmad. I don't know what we call brothers. Это моя первая фотография с главой республики Рамзана Кадырова. Весь красный переживал. But the best item in his collection is most definitely his MMA champion's belt. Четыре пояса сейчас в музее спортивно вот это все достижения музея у Рамзана Кадырова нашего главы. У него там вот этот пояс он мне специально оставил, потому что это мой любимый пояс. The TV has MMA channels showing constantly. A comfortable lifestyle and plenty of money. However, there's one hitch. Kadyrov controls everything, even his comings and goings. We were intrigued by the fact that champions in Kantirov's club, like Chabors, weren't really free. We were given the right to visit, but under two conditions. No shots of the outside of the building, and no questions, which may offend. The club's purpose is also a sensitive subject here as many suspect it's the secret base for the Chechen Special Forces. <laughs> the head coach welcomes us, warning us that only two topics were up for discussion, sport 
and the president. Amongst the portraits of champions, one photo draws our attention. Мы видим это Рамзан Ахматович Кадыров, вместе с ним президент бойцовского клуба Ахмат Абузейд Висмурадов. Nicknamed Patriot, Vizmuradov has been accused by several NGOs of assassinations and human rights abuses. He runs both the club and the Chechen Special Forces, who for the past four years have been persecuting homosexuals in the region. At least 10 have been arrested, tortured, and most probably killed. Vizmurodov is a very discreet man who doesn't give interviews to Westerners. The whole room suddenly went quiet. Vizmurodov has just arrived, a surprise visit for his pupils. A young man gave him some drawings he had done of him and his friend Ramzan Kadyrov. <laughs> He's the boss here. He is both feared and respected. We tried to get closer. That's all we got from Patriot. It's understandable that he's suspicious of foreign camera crews. Because of the role he played in torturing homosexuals in Chechnya, all his foreign assets have been frozen, and he's been banned from the USA. It's better to stay discreet. Mixing politics and MMA is not just Chechnya's specialty. We headed to Moscow, the capital of Russia. Here too, physical strength is valued by the authorities. President Putin likes to present himself as a brave man and an accomplished athlete in front of the cameras. As a seasoned skier or pro ice hockey player, he shows no fear diving in a submersible or even stroking a baby panther. Above all, he doesn't miss an opportunity to show off his black belt in judo. Fighting is everything here. Combat sports are extremely popular in the country, and it's not just a male sport. We met up with 29-year-old Alexandra Albu, one of the biggest female MMA stars in Russia. Вот сюда. Здесь октагон. У нас все любят октагон, поэтому сюда лезут все и ММА и борьба и все. She spends her days training with her coach. It's her passion. Despite her law degree, Alexandra now focuses on combat sports. She has a black belt in karate, is a champion bodybuilder, and is preparing for her next fight in the UFC League, the most prestigious in MMA. 
Да, конечно, все испытывают страх, и не только я. И... Но в этом вся фишка — это преодолеть себя, преодолеть этот страх. Female MMA is exactly the same as the male version. The same intensity, the same risks. Сломали мне нос, это не первый раз. То есть там ты на в октагоне ничего не чувствуешь, потому что там адреналин. Да, это травматично, но это травма по сравнению с победой, по сравнению с теми секундами, когда тебя поднимают руку. But Alexandra wanted to transform her image from a buff bully to a beauty queen. After having punched and kicked for hours, she heads off to the salon for hair and makeup. A second session for her double life. Ну, я считаю, что меня очень хорошо воспитали, и меня воспитала моя бабушка. Она у меня по жизни очень сильный человек. Сильная и независимая. Она мне всегда говорила, что ты должна быть сильной и независимой. Независимой ни от чего мнения, ни от кого. Вот, наверное, только из-за этого. Так как мне это дело как бы нравится этим заниматься, хотелось бы еще на этом зарабатывать. To earn more than just match money, Alexandra Albu has become a social media influencer, a glamour model. She dances, poses, and posts photos and videos online. This blend of violence and glamour makes a killing. And this influencer has tens of thousands of followers on Instagram. Это вообще, в принципе, для всех важно, потому что люди все бросаются на красивое что-то, да? Вам же приятно смотреть красивое что-то и творческое. Поэтому красота — это обязательно. Thanks to her notoriety, she has since become a personal trainer. For $100 an hour. Поэтому ко мне много приходят. Все хотят красивые попы и фигуры. Сейчас весной это вот как раз пик времени для занятий. И сейчас на данный момент у меня очень много клиентов и очень большой поток. She'll now be able to have a career once she stops throwing punches in the ring. However, in a Moscow suburb, one man, also an MMA fighter, has had an even more radical career change. He's moved from the fighting cage to the political arena. We go to Krasnogorsk, 150,000 inhabitants, infamous for its high levels of corruption. We have a meeting with the town's deputy mayor, 48-year-old Jeff Monson who weighs in at 242 pounds. A political anomaly, he's American, knows nothing about running a town, and was given permission to run by Vladimir Putin purely because of his stardom in the world of MMA. My work here is one time, one day a month for like three hours, just coming and meeting with the other deputats about like social issues or problems. And I'll, I'll talk about some of these problems, but. Jeff Monson grew up in Washington state in the U.S. As a young man, he fell in love with communism and the USSR. The political regime changed after the fall of the Berlin Wall, but he didn't. He remains loyal to Russia. This is, um, this is Mother Russia. This is uh, yeah, this emotional. Yeah. I got this before I ever came to Russia. I have it says freedom, solidarity and then the communist star. Now I added, I have another piece to it. I think there's a communist symbol there or something like that. It says, kill the capitalists. <laughs> he personally set up this room upstairs. We just have a little weight room that we do when we do uh, conditioning stuff. We have enough for like the, like little stuff right now. Jeff Monson's political career began four years ago. He requested Russian citizenship back in January 2016 
and was granted it by Vladimir Putin as he's a fan of MMA. Here, he took a moment to remember Lenin. And today we're here celebrating Vladimir Lenin. Well, his body passed away, but his spirit's gonna live on. Since moving to Russia, Putin allowed him to get elected. In exchange, the fighter has his mentor's face on his T-shirt at every match. Free publicity, even though Monson isn't the champion he once was. MMA has given and taken a lot from me. It's taken my eye, it's taken my body, a lot of, it's a lot of pain, a lot of sacrifice. Just being in Russia, a lot of people had to come down and make this happen for me to get, be a citizen of Russia. Um, there's a lot of people that had to make sacrifices and stuff. Now it's time for me to give back. Um, and I, I love this, I really love this country. But Jeff Monson isn't just Vladimir Putin's poster boy. He assured us that he's 100% committed to helping people in his community. The only issue is that he doesn't speak a word of Russian. So he is always accompanied by a translator. I'm, I'm doing a talk tomorrow in Moscow. But I think it's, an, I think, I think it's like 11 or 12. I think. He was stopped for a photo every couple of yards. His campaign ran on recycling, which he hammered into his voters in a series of online clips. Now it's my time. Me, not a most of it. Me, Zachista, He wanted to show that he is still passionate about the cause. But even here, he wasn't up to scratch. So these are, this is, um, this one looks like it's um, compost, like whatever, and then the, like the recycled thing that got picked up, but like the same thing. But, like, this, this stuff was like never seen of, never seen before in Russia. Like this is just rubbish. No, it's plastic, plastic, right. But there's different, uh, I don't know, like, I, this is what problem I don't need, I, don't know, I need to learn to read Russian. It's clear that Jeff was elected for his image, rather than his political ability. But he's determined to keep going. Um, well, I want to do the best I can for Krasnogorsk and do, help the citizens here and, and work my best um, to make life better here. It's a great city. I want to make life better. Um, after, I'd like to um, work in the State Duma and um, like be able to help even more people. Um, I love Russia, I love being here. So this is my goal. Only time will tell where Jeff Monson's political career will lead. In the meantime, he continues to fight and promote Putin, which is clearly his main rule. MMA has millions of spectators across the country, a lot more than those interested in politics. It's a real money spinner for businessmen. We were in St. Petersburg, the former capital of Imperial Russia. We met Greg outside the gym where he'd just finished his workout. Before and after, for business, of course, because it's not normal when you organize professional MMA events and you like a fat guy, you know? This is not normal. We just talk together with my partners and think we need to upgrade the body. Greg Alinian, a 35-year-old businessman, has made his fortune in MMA. I'm not fighter and I don't like martial arts. I don't like. For business, it's more interesting for me. Before fights, I do many different, try to many different business. Well, I try to sell spaghetti in sport shop when I go in institute, in university. I try to uh, rent more, more to scooters, but it don't have a potential. The street fights, I think, is big potential. 
Eight years ago, he launched a street fighting competition that now runs all over Russia. In parking lots or on vacant land, he brings amateur fighters together free of charge and streams it all online. And first event was like $400 maybe. We bring sand from another construction plate. Uh, we take two guys for a build ring, crazy. It's very cheaper, you know? One guy, he's like a blind, he cannot see. It's a very old guy. This brings in millions of views and millions of rubles. Start to head, first experience, exp. Greg has even set up a live betting system. You beat, you make money. KO, $100. Oh, I'm old guy. So, okay, we can go. Greg invites us to his luxury apartment in the city center. There's many pictures here. Look, it's beautiful art, it's real beautiful. High energy because it's abstraction work. Old house, like an um, old paintings. This is my favorite paintings, like my collection goes. Yeah, it's cool. I like the girls in the picture. I don't know why. This, I'm tired, too much. <laughs> it's my grandfather and my brother. And this is my dog. Because uh, she's, uh, this dog died too. But Greg isn't only passionate about art and his pets. My small collection. <laughs> Weapons. Wow. Yeah, it's good. It's a very good quality, you know, because only two stools, because it's like a KGB model special line, very beautiful. This is, uh, you know, like an AK-47, but it's like a vapor gun. A little bit same, but for legal. Uh, this is guns. It's a popular model too. Uh, it's like a number one for protect gun in Russia. I have a good friends and military KGB and police, and sometimes we go together for shooting, go for special education, for all. His pride and joy was hidden in this drawer. This is gifts from YouTube. Street Fight Strelka for passing one million subscribers. Next, but we need one, maybe 10 million subscribers. It's like a gold button. This is the place where organized street fights by franchise. Greg refused to disclose exactly how much he earns. The only information he wanted to share was that his revenue has doubled each year for the past eight years. To keep the business alive, Greg relies on those fans of fighting who are ready to step in the ring in front of the cameras. One of these fans is 24-year-old Danilo. From when did he get? Oh, yeah. He lives in this basement apartment in Moscow. His bedroom lies behind this boiler room. His sports equipment, some medals, and protein powder. And of course, the flat screen TV for MMA video games or real matches. His life has changed since launching his fighting career. С вами еще был другой мой друг, мы троем сидели, смотрели стрелку. Тогда мы они только узнали, там были видео, и я смотрел, и как бы они набирали много просмотров. Я говорил, что типа, ну, чуваки, если я туда пойду, я смогу лучше. И просто друг со мной поспорил, типа, да не, не, я говорю, ну вот, хорошо. И как бы при, он при нем, я зарегистрировался здесь, в этой комнате, чтобы туда пойти. Данило has since fought in the ring 12 times and remains undefeated. His new passion hasn't earned him any money yet, so he works part-time jobs on the side to pay his rent. He dreams of joining the pros one day, and this is the path he must take to get there. Danilo brings us to visit his father, who has been supportive since the very start. He earns a decent wage working in business, but he doesn't want to help his son financially. This is my belt for another first place in absolute category, weight category. You're proud? Пока еще не чем особо. Все самое сложное впереди. Пока еще соперников достойных у него на горизонте не попадалось. Ну ушел.
на скачке с длинной дистанции. Прыжок вперед выснул. Danilo's dad trains him daily in his garden in the run-up to every fight. Сейчас ну, воспитать детей как бы своих очень сложно в нынешнее время, как бы очень много соблазнов. Сейчас интернет, там наркотики, алкоголь, там и прочее. Естественно, как бы ребенок любой хочет ничего не делать и все получать. Все как бы ко всему должен быть готов. Как бы. Почему как бы единоборство? Я ему сказал, что как бы я в свое детство провел в, таком, в такой среде, где нельзя было не, не уметь драться. Danilo has a fight scheduled for the next day. He's under a lot of pressure, not only to avoid injury, but also avoid disappointing his dad. We meet Greg, amateur MMA fight organizer in the parking lot of an industrial block. It's the big day. Sound is records, okay? It's fine. Okay. Always the same routine. His employees set up a ring, some sand, and some seating for the audience. The fights will then be streamed online. Так, ребят, бойцы, только бойцы без секундантов, все сюда. Только бойцы. А секунданты на метров 10, чтобы я не запутался, вас очень много. The idea is simple. Everyone is allowed to fight. No medical certificate or specific training required. As long as you're ready to fight, the show is free for spectators, and the fighters aren't paid. The only one earning any money here is Greg. Давайте, легкий вес до 70 килограмм влево, ребят, сюда. До 70 килограмм все сюда. Ну, встань сюда, Искус, давай, что-то карается. Ты занимаешься сейчас? Сколько у тебя вес сейчас? 68. А у тебя? 68. Давай, попробуйте, знаете. Попробуем, испытайте удачу. Давай, старый против нового, давай. A hundred men turn up on this particular day. There isn't enough space for everyone. So Greg turned half of them away. I look on energy people. If I see a good energy, interesting story, I can connect together because it's most interesting. We have a more popular video, make it 20 million views and more because we choose interesting story, you know, truck driver versus another guy crazy, I'm a rugby player. Just one final step before jumping into the ring. Every fighter must sign a waiver, confirming that should they get injured, the organization isn't liable. <laughs> The most anticipated fight was with undefeated Danilo. His father was in the audience to support him. He was fighting a chef from a Japanese restaurant who has also won every match he's fought in. He's been nicknamed the Sushi Man. Sushi Man has the upper hand early on. <laughs> Clearly raging, Danilo fights back, but in his haste, performs one of the few banned moves in MMA. The fight gets going again and ends in a brawl on the ground. Danilo uses a strangling technique. Sushi Man taps out. Danilo, exhausted but elated, once again brought home another victory. His grand prize is a backpack provided by the sponsor. Greg plans to organize fights in all of the Russian republics before heading out across the world, preferably with his protege alongside him. Germany, Poland. I fight. I tried to go and have a future. He fight because he fight. Danilo's dream is to go pro, so he can finally get paid to take punches. 
It's a tough route to take as opportunities are rare and there's a lot of competition. In both Russia and all over the world, MMA has become a true phenomenon. It's estimated that 1.2 billion households follow the sport. Far from just fights and parking lots, it's now one of the most popular sports in the world.